This conference will now be recorded. Great. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. This presentation will describe our efforts to update basing characteristics in the stream stats application for Southern New England. This work, uh, like Greg already said, was um, done in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration and the Departments of Transportation in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. Uh, this work was done to support stormwater runoff analyses with the Stochastic Empirical Loading and Dilution Model, abbreviated as SELDOM, but the results also provide information for other hydrological, hydraulic, and environmental decision-making needs. The information and data we will discuss today are available in the online stream stats application for each of these states. The link to the underlying GIS data will be provided at the end of the presentation and it will be posted in the chat for you to access at your convenience. So in this presentation, we'll discuss the new roadway data for stream stats in Southern New England. We'll also take a look at the physiographic and anthropogenic properties of basins upstream of intersections of roads and streams, and we'll refer to those as road crossings. We'll briefly touch on the potential uses for these data, and we'll step through the process for delineating a basin and retrieving roadway data and other basin properties in stream stats. We added road categories based on the USGS National Transportation Dataset and Associated Basin Properties to stream stats in Southern New England. The common set of basin properties available in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island will facilitate a wide range of hydrologic analyses. The USGS stream stats application, a screenshot of which is shown on this, uh, this slide, is available in many states, not just um, Southern New England, of course, and it allows users to delineate basins, compute basin properties, and determine stream flow statistics. The new transportation basin properties in stream stats are the length of roads by category and the number of road crossings by category. This graphic of a hypothetical stream basin illustrates, uh, illustrates these two properties. In this diagram, roads are shown by using four colors. The black lines are limited access highways, the red are main arterial roads, the dark blue are local connecting roads, and the green lines are local roads. Streams are also represented as light blue lines, and the gray rectangles are buildings or other impervious surfaces. The yellow stars on this graphic represent road crossings, and a road crossing is the intersection of a road and a stream. Each road crossing represents potential stormwater outfalls from the structures crossing the stream and from the roadway approaches to the structures. To characterize the anthropogenic and physiographic properties of basins that are upstream of roadways, we delineated stream basins from all the road crossings identified in southern New England. However, in stream stats, you can delineate a basin and determine characteristics for any point of interest on the stream networks in Connecticut, Massachusetts, or Rhode Island. The next four slides will be used to define the road categories. Uh, these are based on the National Transportation Dataset Functional Road Classification System, which may also be referred to as the National Map Functional Road Classification System, um, but they have been consolidated into just four categories. Each slide is also going to have um, street view screen captures from Google Maps, and this is just to provide a sense for the range and characteristics within a single road category. So these are category one roads, which are interstates, limited access highways, ramps, and cloverleaf exchanges. Category two roads are main arteries, which are secondary highways or major connecting roads that are not limited access. Category three roads collect traffic from local roads and they connect towns and neighborhoods. And finally, category four roads are local roads, which usually have a single lane in each direction and are commonly found in residential areas. In addition to the new road characteristics, we will also highlight the drainage area, the basin length, and mean basin slope, which are all available in stream stats to support hydrologic analyses, such as the simulation of storm flow volumes. These physiographic properties are shown on the schematic diagram of a basin in both map view and a cross section. The basin length, also known as the main channel length, is the distance from the outlet to the drainage divide along the main channel. 
whereas the mean basin slope, which is also known as the 1085 slope, is computed by identifying the locations and the elevations of points that are 10% and 85% along the main channel, and then taking the difference between those elevations and dividing it by the channel length between those two points. Stream sets also includes anthropogenic variables, um, for example, imperviousness. This schematic diagram in map view shows an example of the total impervious area. And this is calculated by dividing the sum of the areas of roads, roofs, parking lots, and other impervious surfaces by the total drainage area. The total impervious area, or TIA, can be expressed as a fraction or as a percent. So as I mentioned before, we delineated basins from all of those road crossings that were identified in southern New England, and we characterized these basins with respect to the pertinent properties that we just described. In total, 53,131 road crossings were identified in southern New England. However, because delineation of and determining basin characteristics for very small drainage areas is highly uncertain, we did apply criteria in order to subset meaningful basins for analysis. Only basins with a minimum drainage area of 0.025 square miles or 16 acres were selected. And we also limited um, basins to those with a main channel length um, a mean basin slope and a stream density greater than zero, where the stream density is defined as the total length of streams divided by drainage area. This left us with a total of 48,466 basins upstream of road crossings. And analyzing these basins allowed us to learn a lot about stream basins in southern New England with respect to the roadway characteristics and other important basin properties. For example, of the approximately 48,000 road crossings that we analyzed, 75% occur on local roads. This graph is showing the, or it shows the road category of a road crossing on the x-axis and the percent of crossings within that category on the y-axis. Intersections of local connecting roads and streams comprise approximately 13% of all road crossings, while the percentage of crossings on limited access highways and main arterial roads are each less than 10%. Um, it is important to note that the percentage of road crossings on limited access highways is inflated by the intersections of divided highways and streams because these intersections result in two road crossing points. This result, however, is consistent with the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials definition of divided highways as having two or more roadways. Similarly, we found that local roads commonly comprise 70% or more of the total length of roads in stream basins. This graph shows the distribution of the percent of the total length of roads by category. The x-axis shows both the road category for the crossing itself and the category of the length of roads in the basin. Each box shows the 25th percentile, the median, and the 75th percentile, and that small square is, is the average. For several road categories, you'll see that there's no box on the graph, and that's because the 25th percentile, median, and 75th percentile were all equal to zero for those categories. By examining the physiographic properties of the stream basins in southern New England, we learned that they are predominantly small basins with only 10% exceeding a drainage area of 10 square miles. This graph is a probability plot with drainage area on a log scale on the vertical axis and the percentage of basins that exceed a given drainage area in a probability scale on the horizontal axis. The probability scale just stretches out the extreme values so that we can more easily observe them in this figure. Drainage areas of the stream basins ranged from the enforced minimum value of 0.025 square miles up to about 1,100 square miles, and the median size was approximately half a square mile. Although these basins represent topographic drainage areas, not all of the basins represent perennial streams. So these results reflect the density of the road networks in southern New England. The road density is about 3.7 miles per square mile, and the crossing density is about 2.8 crossings per square mile on average. We also examined the correlation among basin properties in the basins upstream of roadways. 
main channel length is highly correlated with drainage area, which is indicated by the tight fit around the regression line shown in this graph, which has drainage area on a log scale on the horizontal axis and a main channel length in miles on a log scale on the vertical axis. While drainage area and main channel length are highly correlated, the relation between drainage area and main channel slope is much weaker. As this graph with drainage area on the log scale horizontal axis and channel slope on the log scale vertical axis shows, slope tends to decrease with increasing drainage area, but there is significant scatter ab above and below the linear regression line on the graph. Analysis of imperviousness in the basins upstream of roadways in southern New England indicates that imperviousness varies from 0 to 85 percent and median of all basins was about 4 percent. The probability plot shows the percentage of basins greater than or equal to a given imperviousness on the horizontal axis and the imperviousness in percent on the vertical axis. 2 percent of basins are not represented here because they have an imperviousness equal to 0. And since the imperviousness is on a log logarithmic scale, those are not reflected here. The properties of stream basins described in this presentation, as well as access to these properties for any user delineated stream basin in southern New England, will support hydrologic decision making needs. Engineers, hydrologists, land and water resource decision makers in southern New England can use the anthropogenic and physiographic basin properties to analyze the volume, timing, and quality of storm flows. This information can be used to inform flood frequency and flow analyses used for hydraulic design decisions, as well as runoff quality analyses. Our effort was designed to provide information necessary to use the stochastic empirical loading and dilution model to simulate the timing and volume of storm flows for water quality analyses at points of interest in southern New England. Road crossings and road lengths by category and the total imperviousness of the upstream basin may also inform management strategies. Upstream road crossings and lengths may indicate the relative contributions of different road types and areas, which may help in the selection of structural or non-structural stormwater control measures. For example, the use of a municipal street sweeping program or a state-maintained roadside swale. In this hypothetical stream basin, the road crossings and lengths are predominantly local roads. Therefore, municipal management strategies may need to be prioritized. Additionally, the roadway basin properties in conjunction with information on road geometry and treatment practices may help inform actions to reduce the load of de-icing chemicals by indicating the proportions of the total loads that may be attributed to state, municipal, and private landowners. So at this point, we'll pivot to how we can access these data in stream stats. And I'll demonstrate this by stepping through um, an example of accessing a site of interest in StreamStats. So first, go to the web application at streamstats.usgs.gov ss, and you'll need to enter a place name or a stream gauge or a latitude and longitude in the search box. After you enter the location, you'll be taken to that vicinity on the map, and you still need to zoom in further to your site of interest and be sure to select the state from the left part of the screen. That will take you to that state's specific application. Now, once you've selected a state, that's when the stream grid will appear as these blue boxes. At this point, if you want to, you can change the base map to help identify a point of interest. In this example, we've switched the base map from the National Geographic to imagery. I find this can be helpful to me. And I'm going to select a point where I selected a point downstream of the interstate here. Um, once you've identified your point of interest, you need to select the point on the stream grid. And it is important to click a point on the stream grid itself so that your delineation will be successful. So after a short time, the delineated basin will appear as a yellow polygon. You can select the basin characteristics of interest from the left-hand side of the screen. 
The basin properties that we discussed in this presentation are available, but there are many others available in stream stats, and the list is often unique for a particular state application. So there are brief definitions um, that are provided in order to guide your selection of these basin properties. So the values that you, or the, the values of the basin properties that you select will be reported, but the underlying data sets, like the point locations of the road crossings, are not going to be visible in stream stats. You can view the computed statistics in the same window, or you can move forward and generate a report. To generate a report, all you need to do is check the report box and select continue. And the basin report shown on the screen includes a map view um, as well as the selected basin characteristics. And you can print this to a PDF or you can download the data in other formats. A shapefile download is helpful to support subsequent analyses in GIS software because it includes the basin polygon and it has the characteristics as the attribute table. So as a reminder, in this presentation, we discussed the addition of the road crossings and road lengths for limited access highways, main arterial roads, local connecting roads, and local roads in stream stats. We also examined the characteristics of basins delineated above all road crossings in southern New England. And we just briefly touched on potential uses for these data. And finally, we stepped through how to retrieve the data in, from stream stats. So as we discussed, the results of our analyses are available within the stream stats application and can be retrieved for um, a site of interest that you have. But if you want to do a more detailed area-wide analysis, um, such as the basin property analysis examples that we showed earlier, then you can access the data sets that contain the locations of the approximately 53,000 road crossings in southern New England, and you can access the characteristics that were computed for all the basins upstream of those crossings. These data sets are published in a USGS data release, so the link to that data release is shown here, as well as a QR code for easy access. At this point, we're going to stop the recording and we'll have time for some questions.